So we got a lot to get into. You have an amazing career. So let's, I, I want to, I always start kind of at the beginning. In, in your story, if I'm correct, you, you, you're you born and raised, or you're raised in Atlantic City, New Jersey? I was born, I was born in Atlantic City. Okay. Raised, and raised in South New Jersey, like 10 minutes from Atlantic City. About 10 minutes. Now, you're, you're into music. Like, like, you have done amazing things in music. There's no music scene out there. How in the world did you make it from, you know, South Jersey to becoming this international worldwide producer that you've become? You know how I made it is the hustle, right? And and early on, I think it was it was it was defined in me early on, or, or at least my mother saw something in me early on. The doctors told my mother that um uh, that they had they walked in the office and said we have bad news she was pregnant with me around six seven months into pregnancy they told her you know she's real sick your son is not that this child is not going to make it he's not going to make it we have bad news i come from a family of faith uh my mom wouldn't ex- accept that and she was like uh i need to have another opinion on this da, 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 da. you know just some more tests and the doctor said he's not going to make it child's not going to make it is this a second opinion said that as well? Yeah, yeah. So um, she went. She went to faith, man. She went to God and prayer, and my father, and um, and they just believed that wasn't going to be the case. They've always said that they believed they were going to have four children, and I was going to be the fourth one. And um, and sure enough, you know, the doctors was wrong, and God was right. Right there, you go. And you fast forward to when I was about five years old. Um, my mother was a housekeeper. She, um, she, 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 she was um, the help, right? And so, so they say. And and one day, um, she got blamed for something. So there was this little kid at the house that she was helping, and he had a little car, and he was taking the car across the piano, and he scratched up the piano in the house. And who gets the blame? She gets the blame, and they fire her. But before she gets, before she leaves. She asked the piano teacher that used to come every week. She goes, do you think you can come teach my son how to play piano? And he looked up and down as if like, you can't afford me. You know what I mean? You, you know, in the rich, so-called rich neighborhood. So you can't afford me. And she goes, I'll do whatever it takes, scrape up whatever I got to scrape up to, to get you to teach my son. And so he says, wow, okay, let me think about it. And he gives, he says, I'll come and check him out. I'll, I'll do a lesson with him. And so he comes, do, does a lesson with me. And um, he goes, you, you're right. You know, even though I didn't even want to play the piano, he goes, you're right. There's something special in him. And she goes, that's what she told him. She goes, there's something special in him. I don't know what it is yet, but I want you to help nurture it. And, um, and then he decided to take me on and teach me. And my, you know, and I started taking it. It took the boldness of my mother, number one, to pray. Mm-hmm. The first time, and then it took the boldness of my mother to, to ask um, the piano teacher inside someone else's home would they would they come and teach after she's been fired. You know what I mean? Like that's wow. bold, and um, and that's where it kind of started, man. Like you know, as a as a young kid, my um, in our household, we were we were born into a household where my father was the pastor, my mother was the choir director, my sisters played in church, my brothers played instruments in church. So you had to like, we were like churching it five days out the week, like literally, like, I mean, you know, no exaggeration, five days out the week, I was in church. I didn't know nothing else. Um, music was all we know. My dad kind of had a house rule. Like if you don't play piano, you can't live in this house. You know, that was kind of his rule. And um, so we all had to learn some type of, whether it was some type of instrument, we all learned piano, drums or whatever. And as I got older, I just started to develop more of a love for that instrument. And um, when I was about 10 years old, now mind you, like, you're right, Atlantic City had no type of outlet. There's no outlet in South Jersey. No, there's no music scene out there. Whatsoever. And by the way, like, New York is somewhat, New York and Philadelphia was probably the closest places for music, but New York was where all the labels were. And New York felt like, you know, you're going to California or something. That's a million miles away. Yeah, two and a half hour ride. You just was, it was, we never went, we didn't go to New York like that unless my dad had to preach there. It wasn't like we was in New York 
It wasn't like we lived in Edgewater and we going right over the, through the tunnel or something like that. It wasn't like that. So I only saw New York like once or twice as a little boy. Like, you know what I mean? Like when my dad had to speak somewhere and I went with him, that was probably it. I didn't really see New York. I didn't know what New York was. But at like 10 years old, um, I got heavily into production. I was in the mall. I was, I'm going to tell you the first time I got inspired by, by music, um, secular music, because it wasn't allowed in our house. So you mm-hmm. got to understand that that was against the rules of the Jerkins home, right? Real quick, your father's a pastor. What's your religion? What's your faith? Pente- we, came, we were brought up with Christian. We were brought up Pentecostal holiness. Good Lord. Like, like my, my, my family is Pentecostal. So that is, that's a different level of, different. of Christianity. It is strict. <laughs> It's super strict. Yes, it it's, is. It's super strict. Like I never, I never saw, I never saw my mom with pants on ever. That is my family, one hundred percent. That's why I'm saying, like, so, so I'm so interested in where this story is about saw, to go. I never saw a woman in church without a hat on. Like, you, I'm talking my about, mother. I'm talking that's my mother. Growing up. I'm talking about growing up, by the way, right? It's just, it's just, you know, it, it's just super strict. So growing up, you know what it is to be in that household, right? And Secular music was forbidden in that in our house. That's why I have such a love for gospel music even to this day because mm-hmm. I grew up on it. I know every gospel song you could think of, at, that man, as a kid. So when I was ten years old, though, we was in Toledo, Ohio, visiting our relatives, and I was in the mall in Toledo, Ohio, and I heard Human Nature come on, and Michael Jackson's Thriller album just came out, and they were, and I could hear, it, and I was like blown away by the sound of it. i never forget that day. And in that moment, that was the moment I was like, I want to make music. Like I was, I was tinkering with it because my brother was seven years older than me and he always was in like, he always made music and stuff. But it was that moment when it was like the, the light bulb went on, like went off for me. Like, I got to do this. This is what I want to do. And I got to listen to whatever this is. I got to get my hands on this Michael Jackson Thriller album. And and I did, right? I, I found my way to get it um, through my cousins in Toledo. And I was listening to it and I was listening to the Sonics and I was like, yo, in my mind as a kid, I was like, blown away by the sound of it because it didn't sound like gospel what I was used to. It mm-hmm. sounded so pristine and clean and just like, and I was like, th- it just blew me away. So then I got inspired and I, and I started to like dig into more things, sneak more secular records, right? And I, and I discovered New Jack Swing. And I discovered Teddy Riley, and that changed my life. When I when I discovered discovered New Jack Swing, that did it. It was that was it. I was like, I'm going to do this. And I would read the credits. Mm-hmm. I would read the credits, and I, and I would I would study what a producer meant. Because back then, credits were detailed. So yes. you you would get the credits, and it would say produced by Teddy Riley. Then it would say bass synth by Teddy Riley, drums by Teddy Riley. Yes. So and so. So then I started putting two to two together. I'd be like, okay, that's what a producer does. He does all of, all this and all of that. So I got to learn how to do all of this and all of that. And from there, man, I just got heavily, heavily into making music, right? And mind you, I'm still sneaking though. I'm sneaking. I'm sneaking that's that the the guy albums and, and the Keith Sweats and the Johnny Kipps and all that. I'm sneaking the, the show, Dougie Fred, all that I'm sneaking. And but I'm studying while I'm sneaking. I'm studying like crazy, and I'm no, I'm no, I'm no older than probably twelve years old now. And I'm, I'm like in it. I'm like in it. And I was sneaking my brother's room because my brother didn't like me to go in his room. His room had a little keyboard set up and stuff. And I was sneaking there, and I would make music when he wasn't home. And um, and was crazy, man. I got good really fast. Like I got really. Like from in my own assessment, mm-hmm. and people locally, right? They would they would literally say, "I was told you so." They'd be like, "Sounds like it needs to be on the radio." What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.